Hello and welcome back to Intermission playing Resident Evil. I'm Michael. I'm Ryan. And I'm Stuart the player. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we've lumbered Stuart with playing again because he's the only competent player. <laughs> That's something we should actually do because I just realised we've never said that on any of our videos. Oh, by the way, again, obviously, Resident Evil. <laughs> um, is that we should actually mention who's playing it. Because yeah. I was playing it the first time and the only way I think any viewer could probably tell is the amount of times you were like, Michael! Yeah. Yeah. But Stuart's like our best Resident Evil player, so yeah. He's the only one that's actually completed it at all. Whereas, so he knows roughly what he's doing. Whereas for Wolf Among Us, that should probably be Ryan's niche. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, I did double check the footage that Cry put up. The um, nipples are fine. We don't need to worry about that. Okay. That might mean nothing to anyone who just likes it. It's like, what are they talking about? Wolf Among Us episode 2. If you don't know what we're meaning by that, then just, I don't know, go and buy the game and play it. It's or, good, you'll like it. Or watch If you like Telltale, you'll like it. Anyways, Anyways, moving on. In our last video, we acquired the armor key. Oh yeah, I forgot we'd done that. So now we need to go up and replace it in the trap room. Yep. Now we just need to find where that room is. Yeah. Just so that way you guys know, we record these episodes in bulk. We'd sit down, record a couple hours, then we break it down into the episodes. So, um, it's actually been like what three weeks since we played Resident Evil Two, possibly good, longer. A good while, at least. So, um, yeah, we have yeah. a lot to catch up on. So yeah, this—if we end up backtracking a lot more than your average player, that's why. Yeah. Don't think it was this way. Yeah, no, because we already done that. We'd done the dog. Because mm -hmm. that's how we got the key. Yeah. That's... Okay. Yeah, you will learn that the map will become your best friend. Mm -hmm. Not the herbs, not the shotgun, the, the map. map. Well, the, the, the herbs and the shotgun can help, but the map's how you find your way around this bloody place. Yeah. Okay. I actually remember when I my brother played this one, he kept forgetting about the map, mm -hmm. so he pretty much started drawing his own map, mm. just so he'd remember parts of it. <laughs> okay, dee -dee -dee. Every time I see a window now, I just expect dog, dog to jump through it. it. Yep. Locked. Emblem of armor. Okay, right. so we don't have that yet, we've got the false armor key, we need to go and fi swap it around. Yep. Let's see. Let's just do lead again. Oh, not nope, been in here. Is that another save area? No, that's basically a place where we can get kerosene. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, the only save room is just along the hall here, so it's kind of pointless to have another yeah, save room. Yeah, I was kind of thinking, why would there be two in the same <laughs> Very bad level design. <laughs> Something that became very common in the later Resident Evils. Yeah. Maybe the next one we should do, like Resident Evil game we should do after this one should be Resident Evil 4. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go in order, just like scatter play a random game. <laughs> well that was sort of one of the things we joked about was not it was like it was doing things completely out of context. Like doing a horror game at Christmas. Or any other yep. indie horror game. Yeah, like doing a horror game at Christmas and going, it's our Christmas special. Because <laughs> everyone would be expecting, oh, Christmassy content. No, we're here we are sitting playing, I don't Plus, know. There's not many, well, I can't, not off the top of my head, can't think of any, like, Christmassy games. Well, you could probably just, you know, like, minimize it down to games that are at Christmas or Christmas themed mods. Damn you, Thunderclouds. I'm amazed that actually if you go back to like the door that we just came in, well never mind, we don't actually need to do it right now, but there was like a glass lying on the table and that was like the only hint that there was anyone ever there. Yeah. <laughs> it's really hard to imagine anyone even living here. I even think we've, yeah. Is falling apart. I think not even was. that, just even, could you imagine just living in a house this size? It'd be like, how would you find your way around? Yeah, <laughs> at least we're not going on about the decor, because that was like the thing we did in the first record for this, was we just went on and on about... 
I mean, oh, this could not have been a nice place I to live. I about those bloody birds. I think you can shoot them, although I don't think they actually give you anything good. Uh, Wouldn't uh, take the chance. Yeah, let's not waste bullets. Yeah. Plus, crows are a pain in the arse to deal with, especially indoors. Yeah. Oh. oh, here's the guy. Here's ah, ah. Ah. Shit. Is it dead? Hang on. Uh, yep, yeah, he's, he's dead. dead. Close call. So if you kill a crimson head, they don't get back up. Pretty much. Right, uh -oh. now this is the bet. Yep. Just check we've got space. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah, because if we didn't, then, well, this would be pretty freaking pointless. Now we have more space. Yeah. So, yay! Yeah, that whole may they find peace and death is not being sarky at all. This is, you're going to die. <laughs> Okay, I think you have to go into the inventory and use on the um, imitation of the key. Yes. Yay. You have to wonder how much a death trap like that would cost. Yeah, at least and millions. More importantly, you have to wonder how much the death trap would cost to keep people silent about it. Mm. And you can hire foreign laborers as well, but that's not going to keep them quiet. And we'll okay, so we need to come back here when we get the last key. Yep. At least it was nice enough to put everything back in its place. I imagine the statue mm -hmm. just stood there. Because we're stuck! <laughs> yeah. Let us out. <coughs> so now it's back downstairs? Yep. Just check who the health is first. Yeah, we're fine. Yes, we don't need to disturb the dead any more than we have to. <laughs> Quite you. Oh, but yeah, living room's fully done now. That's good. So it's like, we got the units in. Did I tell you the, the um, story about the measurements getting cocked up? Yes. <laughs> well, I'll just state it again for the viewers. Basically, we were redoing the living room, mm -hmm. and we were meant to... We measured out the room. And we thought we got the measurements right. And we measured about 10 different times with a bunch of our people. My Aunt Kathy measured it, neighbor Alistair measured it, and we measured it. And it was like 10 different times in total. And we measured the stuff at Ikea about 9 times. On the 10th measurement of the stuff at Ikea, we learned that we actually got the measurements wrong and it was 20 centimeters larger than what we thought. So we had to go and get an entirely different set of units. I'm just glad I didn't need to help build them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now that I'm, I think about it, when I saw that glass there, there's still like clear puddles of liquid. Mm. Yeah. If that had been there for a few days, it would have gone by now. Oh, I would have knows. evaporated. Yeah. So yeah, how that our son was kicking about earlier. Yeah. So that's the thing. How fresh does that make that like liquid then? 